world of beautiful clothes, couture clothes, is full of careful detail and construction. In the current collection I have, we have a great many of the garments held to the waist in front with tiny biases. I'd like to show you how we have done those very neatly and how much of a simple bias you can do if you will have a bit of patience, which is a word that we need to think about when we are doing careful clothes. You can do all of that. The first thing you need to do is to cut a true bias three quarters of an inch wide. Now, don't fold over a piece of fabric to get a true bias that is three quarters of an inch wide. That will give you a true bias folding over the fabric, but I would rather you would take a piece of fabric, measure whatever width it is, let's say it's 36 inches wide, measure down 36 inches on the selvage and put a mark, and join that mark with your edge up here. Or I don't care if you need a short bias, say we take 10 inches along the cross grain, 10 inches down the selvage, mark that mark, and join those with a ruler or whatever you have at hand. On a dark piece of fabric, I mark with chalk. On a pale color, I very lightly pencil, and I'm doing all of this on the wrong side, remember. Now, to get this much length that I'm showing you here, which we had around the dress on Virginia, you'll never find a piece of fabric wide enough to do all of this. This is joined, but it's joined only one time. So remember, I have either penciled or chalked in a diagonal true bias. To get two pieces of the bias, I mark out from that one line three quarters of an inch because I find three quarters of, a, of an inch is the narrowest. You can cut these very skinny biases. So I mark out three quarters from that line on one side, three quarters on another side, and I have three parallel bias lines. I cut those and I wind up with, for this, two three quarter of an inch bias ribbons. Of course, they will be the same color. Join those on grain, and by grain I mean straight grain or cross grain, whichever it has, whichever end you have ended up with. But don't join on bias. I'm going to ask you at the machine once you're stitching to stretch this like mad. So you must have exactly the same stretch as though there was no seam. So join it on grain. Press it carefully. Trim away as much as possible, but not so much that you might ravel away. After you've done that joining, fold the bias edge to edge, where you are now 3 eighths of an inch wide, coming folding in from that 3 quarters. And at that time, take a needle and thread, and down approximately the center of that bias, which is now 3 eighths of an inch wide, hand based. And you can do stitches that are, say, a good eighth of an inch, almost a quarter of an inch long. And in this instance, you can do a number of them. When you're doing those stays I talked to you about at the neckline, you have to do a stitch, come up, a stitch, come up, the same thing with, if you would put in a zipper. Here you can do a number of them to save yourself time. But notice, please, that I'm holding that very definitely edge to edge. Now say I have done six inches. I would take my scissors, cut that thread, go over a couple of those threads, and start again another six inches. No knots anywhere in this, please. Once at the machine, I want all of this to give with you as you are stretching. You need to hand baste because this edge needs to be held very carefully, very meticulously, edge to edge. And there is no way, once you're at the machine, stretching this like mad, that you can hold that edge to edge if you have not hand basted. All right, having hand basted the entire length of it, go to the machine, stitch in an eighth of an inch from the raw edge, from the cut edge. Don't work from the fold edge, work from the cut edge. And as you are machine stitching, stretch like mad. My advice to you would be to start with a rather short one 
rather than all of this long one that I showed you on Virginia. Start with a short one to begin to get a bit of an expertise. But stretch like mad as you are stitching at the machine. We leave our machine set 10 to 12 stitches to an inch to do all of the seaming on the fabrics that we are showing you. If it were a heavier fabric, perhaps I would do longer stitches, but I think you are safe in leaving your machine set 10 to 12 stitches to an inch, and we do use a number 11 machine needle, which we change often. At the machine, remember, stretch like mad. Now, up until now, I think what we've talked to you about, it's not difficult. Unquestionably, it takes a bit of time. Your difficulty comes in turning one that is this long. I hope you have a loop turner. You can buy those in most notion stores for, say, a dollar and a quarter. It is this long, skinny piece of tin or whatever it is, and on one end there is a very definite hook. On the other, there is a round open. You can easily thread all of what I have shown you here onto the loop turner. The big thing is pulling it through. I think we found a good of a bit of a good story, although you may have your own idea. But the girls in my workroom go to the machine. They take the spool of thread off the bar. They put the open of the loop onto the bar, having threaded this through the bias and having gotten a very firm hook on it. And then they use that as their leverage. And I see the chair backing up as they pull. If you try to turn all of this on the loop turner as you're standing in thin air, you'll never get anywhere. You might have a hook on the wall that you could use, but try taking the spool of thread off your bar at the machine and putting this on top of it and getting leverage to pull through. And with a bit of patience and doing it a number of times, I think you will arrive. There is one other process that is very simple. Go to your ironing board, because there is still a bit of stretch in this bias. Nail it with two pins on your ironing board on one end. Go as far as you can with the bias. Nail it on the other end. Take your iron full of steam and go right on top of it. Don't put, in this instance, your iron on top of the bias, but go right on top of it. Get it full of moisture and steam. Leave these two pins in. Pick these two up stretch it again, put the two pins in, let it dry, and then you have true biases done in the skinniest lingerie way that if you have a dress with lingerie straps, we've now taken all the bias out, you're not constantly pulling them up. If you're using it around the waistline the way we showed you the dress, then I think it is a very neat finish to do a little knot here. We take our number size 10 needle, cruel embroidery it is, and our size A silk thread, and we simply catch that little knot, and that way you have a good finished edge. Clothes today in the fashion picture are very often unlined, and in that instance, what do you do about a hem? Certainly, if you wish, you can use a hem hem, although I find that with having no underlining and with these very fluid crepes, such as this four-ply silk crepe, you really can't leave more than an inch hem if we're going to do a hem hem. And in that instance, I take my short needle, which I have threaded up with a single size A silk thread, and I hold back my hems. I never do a hem right on the edge. I never use seam binding, I never use lace, because if you fell the hem or sew the hem right on the edge, from the wrong side, of course, I feel I'm going to be aware of a ridge on the right side. So if I'm doing a hem hem in an unlined garment, I hold back that hem by, say, a quarter of an inch. I take my needle. I pick up one thread on the hem side. Along, I'm sorry, one thread on the garment side, a longer thread on the hem side, and I do a running stitch, not a back stitch, a running stitch and I leave that running stitch rather loose. On the other hand, with the unlined clothes, I think you might do what I've done here, a very neat hem by machine. And this is especially good if you're wearing a long dress that has a lot of volume to it. 
where I feel you don't want to hem him so that if you're coming up a step or if you're dancing, you don't have the danger of catching your heel in that hem hem if the hem has been cut away to nothing. And of course, I'm thinking of a garment that has been done on your anatomy. All right, to do that hem neatly with a machine stitch or with actually with doing it with two machine stitches, I always, of course, take my hem length on the person and I pin that hem length by eye. And having once pinned all the way around on her and having arrived at the hem length I want, I then take a needle and a thread and I give myself a thread tracing on where the hem length is that I took on the individual person. Now that is very easy to do just a tracing with a needle and thread, taking the pins out as you approach them so you have a very definite guide as to where the, her length is to be. After I have traced all the way around, I then go to the machine and I turn up the fabric along that thread tracing, knowing that that is the length I took on the anatomy. I stitch right on the edge and you find what is more comfortable for you. For this first one, I think you might do it from the wrong side, but right on the edge. Now, after I do that first machine stitch on my thread tracing, I go to the ironing board and I press. It is very important that you press your first stitch to get out the machine kink. I come back and I trim right to that machine stitch. And once again, I do another machine stitch, turning up the skinniest, narrowest possible. Now here, I feel you do need to think in terms of working from the right side. The skinniest possible. Do that, and when you come to a bias, don't stretch the way I talk to you about long bias seams. Pull gently. And after you've gone all the way around, and this is one time when I would not rush that machine, I hear the girls in my workroom going very, very slowly so that we wind up completely finished in the most beautiful, neat way. You might be able, to, I think, to see that on the wrong side, we have two machine stitches. On the right side, we have one machine stitch. And again, that story that after the second machine stitch, we went to the ironing board and pressed, and then you have what we have here.